I'm Steve Burkhardt from San Antonio, Texas, and I'm going to talk to you today about superior capsular reconstruction and why I think it's the new gold standard for the irreparable cuff tear in active patients. In these active patients that don't have glenohumeral arthritis, I think our goal needs to be joint preservation. You don't necessarily want to put in a reverse total shoulder with all of the restrictions that would entail and all the potential complications. So we're trying to do something that would be arthroscopic and preserve their own natural joint. The background behind the superior capsular reconstruction, or the SCR, is from Dr. Mahata in Japan, who had reported good clinical results with the SCR uh, using fasciolata as an autograft. More recently in the United States, we've been using dermal allograft uh, as a graft source, and we've done that for several reasons. One is that we thought it would reduce the operative time compared to fasciolata, certainly would reduce the donor site morbidity compared to a fasciolata autograft. And there is a long history of good results using uh, dermal allograft for cuff augmentation. The BRASS group is my group of ex-fellows and myself who have done multi-center studies in the past, and we've looked at the SCR patients that we all did in 2015. Uh, the surgeons were myself, Dr. Adams, Dr. Denard, Dr. Brady, and Dr. Tokish. And we had 62 combined patients uh, with a 75% satisfactory outcome in that group. Uh, lessons learned in that initial pilot study are, first of all, we need to use a three millimeter thickness dermal allograft. Out of that uh, series, we had five one millimeter grafts, and of those five, three or 60% of those failed. Second lesson, do not do the SCR in patients with significant arthritis, particularly Hamada 4, uh, where you have bone on bone articulation, because we had over a 90% failure rate in those patients with significant glenohumeral arthritis. Lesson number three, if the graft healed by MRI, we had a 100% success rate. So I think you need to make every effort to achieve strong mechanical fixation, which will then enhance the healing potential for this graft. Lesson four, the majority of graft failures were on the humeral side. This was a bit unexpected to us, but I think it, it emphasizes now that we need to pay attention to the humeral graft fixation. We use a speed bridge and usually a double pulley medial mattress to reinforce that as well. And if there's a gap from front to back that you're, that you're closing that's uh, more than 30 millimeters, I'll add a third swivel lock on the medial row of the humerus uh, for those larger defects. Lesson number five, results varied by surgeon. And I think a lot of that was indications and some of the uh, surgeons would put these in if there was more arthritis than, than others and had worse results. And for each surgeon, uh, the later patients had better results. So there is a learning curve and you do get better both in choosing the proper patients and in doing the procedure over time. What are the indications? <clears throat> Who should get the SCR? Well, these should be active patients with an irreparable tear, usually of the supraspinatus and or the infraspinatus. Uh, they should have minimal or no glenohumeral arthritis. They need to have a functional deltoid and trapezius and they need either an intact or repairable subscap. Uh, another subgroup would be active patients with previous failed cuff repairs and a deficient capsule, very thin capsule, even though they might still be repairable. My personal uh, clinical results um, as of the end of August of this year uh, represents 97 patients over a three-year period. I had two failures that required revision surgery. One of these was revised to reverse total shoulder at 10 months post-op after a fall. And the other one was revised to a second SCR. And this particular patient was a younger patient that had had a fall in the early post-operative period. At one year, we had significant improvement in all parameters, a significant improvement in range of motion from a pre-op of 142 degrees to a post-op of 167 degrees. The ASES scores improved from 51 to 89, so almost up to 90 on our ASES scores. The VAS scores um, were under one, so very little pain. And the SANE scores, or the percent of normal that the patient felt their shoulder was, was about 86%. So there are some technical tips that I want to give you. Uh, one of these would be that for a large graph that's greater than 30 millimeters in the AP dimension, use three medial anchors on the superior glenoid. And that's gonna prevent bow stringing across that apex of the glenoid. If you bow string, you'll lose contact with the mid portion of your graft and you don't want that. You wanna maintain that solid contact. 
You want to uh, place your anteromedial medial anchor anterior to the biceps root, and you'll place it at the junction of the coracoid base and the coracoid neck. And by doing that, you're anterior to the apex of the glenoid, so that basically you have this sort of a monk's hood that is going to prevent uh, antero superior escape. You can improve visualization of the superior glenoid with a posterior anteral slide and a supraspinatus traction suture up through the nevius or portal. Can an SCR reverse pseudoparalysis? And the answer to that is yes. I'll show you a couple of examples. This was a 72-year-old rancher. He'd had two failed rotator cuff repairs of his left shoulder, was in constant pain. He had pseudoparalysis. He'd been advised to have a reverse total shoulder replacement by two different orthopedic surgeons. He said, no, I don't want that because I can't restrict my activities. I have to do heavy work on the ranch. He did not have any glenohumeral arthritis, but you see here he definitely had a pseudoparalysis. He, he couldn't raise his arm more than about 30 degrees against gravity. At a year post-op, he rated his shoulder above 90%. He had regained full active elevation with excellent external rotation strength. So here he is at a year post-op, and you see he has regained full overhead. He's doing all of his work on the ranch now. He's very happy with his result. Here's another case, a 58-year-old man. He's a, a CPA, has a desk job, but he has this profound pseudoparalysis. He was advised to have reverse total shoulder replacement as well, even though he's under the age of 60. If you look at his exam, you see he has this profound pseudoparalysis. He has anterosuperior escape. He has deconditioning of his deltoid, so that even though he gets about 30 degrees, it starts to drop and sag back down once he gets that. At six months post-op SCR, he had improved significantly. He could easily get the arm up to about 90 degrees of elevation. And then by a year post-op, he again rated his shoulder above 90%, had active elevation of about 150 degrees. This was a little home movie that his wife made and sent to me. But you see he's able to get his arm up uh, very functionally overhead. But he had good strength even holding it out at 90 degrees, as you'll see here. So he brings it straight out horizontal and just rock solid steady out there. What about the MRI after SCR? This is a 56-year-old man. He had uh, an injury at two months post-op, so he got uh, an MRI scan that showed a very robust graft, and then we got a one-year post-op MRI that again showed this very robust graft. So this is what we like to see. Interestingly, in a lot of these people in the younger age groups, we'll see improvement in the uh, cross-sectional muscle. So if you look at the preoperative uh, parasagittal uh, cut of the MRI scan on the left, you'll see that there's grade three to four Gutelier uh, fatty, fatty infiltration changes. And those have partially reversed to grade one to two Gutelier on the right hand at a year post-op. So uh, this doesn't happen in everyone, but it happens in a fair percentage of people. So that's been very impressive and very encouraging. So. Think about SCR as an effective biologic alternative to reverse arthroplasty in these younger, more active people. And I think that it works because it provides a stable fulcrum and optimizes our force couples.